you will raise up your voice in intercession and in a prayer of command. The way you want a manifestation is the way you should personally pray. And if you like, you may decide to keep quiet. But if you like, you raise your voice in violent, merciless manner. Every blessing that my ancestors have lost, I possess them. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to possess that. The blessings I've lost, I repossess that. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for a time like this. And we praise your holy name for your mighty hand upon our lives. Thank you because of the ministry of your ministering spirit. Thank you for the power and the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the ever efficacious power in the prayer of the righteous. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Tonight, let there be no one in this service who will go home with a plastic experience. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. A louder amen. Let's take our Bibles, beloved. I'm going to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus chapter 5. Exodus chapter 5. And tonight we're looking at breaking the power of your Pharaoh. Breaking the power of your Pharaoh. In Exodus chapter 5, I read from verse 1. And afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Who said, Let my people go? The Almighty. Then somebody replied. God said, Let somebody go. Somebody now replied. And Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. That is an introduction to the power of Pharaoh. Let my people go. He said, no, I will not let them go. Let them stay here and suffer. I prophesy upon the life of somebody, any ancestral power, any domestic witchcraft, any organized warfare, any hidden bondage, any ancestral chain, any Luciferian champion, saying they will not let you go. They shall be buried alive. In the name of Jesus. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 12, the action of the Almighty. Exodus 12, 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. We skip those two scriptures. In fact, to be quite honest with you, every man or woman born into the domain of a field, enclave of Egypt, when a person is born into a pharaoh agenda, there are terrible, terrible manifestations of this kind of situation. The person faces the rage of stubborn pursuers. It is the agenda of Pharaoh. The person who faces human, physical, spiritual, and environmental factors working against or moving forward. Power of Pharaoh. The person who faces enemies employing sorcerers and magicians against them. 
This is the power of Pharaoh. And don't deceive yourself. <laughs> Who can attack somebody like me? What do I have that? Ah, you make a mistake. You are not what you have now. By totality of what you are supposed to have. So whether you have anything now, you don't have anything now, they will still attack you because they know what you are supposed to have and what you are about to have. It's the power of Pharaoh. All the arrogant enemies, arrogant enemies, is the power of Pharaoh. But if somebody say, I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. It's the power of Pharaoh. They draw powers from the heavens. They draw power from the sun and from the waters. That is the power of Pharaoh. All the speaking enemies, the talking and talking and talking and talking, talking and talking and talking. That is the power of Pharaoh. All the contemptuous enemies, they hold you in contempt. They insult your God. Those are the Pharaohic enemies. All those inflexible aggressors. No matter what you say, they are inflexible. They are bent on destroying the person. That is the power of Pharaoh. All the raging enemies, they operate in the rage. The rage looks like madness. And it seems as if the rage has no order. But it's a lie. The rage is being carried out with utmost intelligence. There's a power of Pharaoh. All the spiritual exploiters, using your labor to advance while you are poor, is the spirit of Pharaoh. All the hard slave masters, is the spirit and power of Pharaoh. All the unprofitable delays, they are the spirit and power of Pharaoh. You brought in materials from abroad, you are late clearing it. You sell, they are late in paying it. You get the material, you are slow in selling it. It's the power of Pharaoh. The power of Pharaoh wants to negotiate your freedom. Then let us negotiate. But then that's why we pray that there shall be no negotiation. The power of Pharaoh is the enemy that is willing to die than to let you go. The power of Pharaoh. Every man or woman, one way or the other, you have a Pharaoh facing you. It may not be facing your life to terminate your life. But when you say, let my career go, say no. Stay here in one spot. Let my marriage progress. No. Stay here in one spot. Let my business move. Say no, it will not move. Those are the pharaohic forces. I'm praying for somebody. Any power say no to your laughter. Any power say no to your uncommon testimonies. Any power say no to your greatness. Let those powers be buried alive tonight. In the name of Jesus. That amen is not loud enough. Let your amen roar like thunder. In the name of Jesus. This situation was going on. Then the Almighty came into the battlefront. So now I'm just going to pass through. Pass through. So when I pass through, I will smite both man and beast. Now say so I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt. When Moses was going to Pharaoh, was going to Pharaoh, was going to Pharaoh, Moses will speak to Aaron. So tell Aaron to say this. Tell Aaron to say this. Moses will talk, Aaron will say it. Now go to a position. When God now say, Moses, you say it directly. The spirit of Pharaoh has no respect for delegation. You must be combatant now. So Aaron was talking. The man was saying no. Moses will talk. The man was saying no. Finally, God said, okay. And error, you have tried. No more say this, no more say that. Now I'm going to pass through the land. And there will be no fighting, but I will pass through the land. When God comes to that your battlefront, there is no more any battle. Say, so let me pass through first. So when I pass through, you now come and take stock and see what happens. May the Lord Jehovah pass through the camp of your enemies. Pass through, pass through, pass through, pass through, pass through. Pass through, 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 pass through. In the name of Jesus, let our amen be loud. May the Lord Jehovah pass through the camp of your oppressors. Pass through the camp of your tormentors. 
pass through the camp of your enemies pass through the camp of your pursuers in the name of Jesus so the final kill is for God to pass through and he was going to do it not in the day not in the afternoon but at the midnight hour at the midnight hour may your midnight hour enemies be disgraced massively in the name of Jesus after God has now passed through they are to now let the people go God won Pharaoh seven times and then trouble started how did we get to this level the descendants of the patriarch Abraham moved to Egypt during the time of Joseph about 70 souls moved to Egypt while in Egypt they began to multiply and they became a nation within a nation and God blessed them mightily there then another king now arose that did not know Joseph and the problem of the people of Joseph started the suffering was much for 130 years they suffered slavery all kinds of terrible things the people now cried out to the God of their forefathers was then God raised up Moses to go and set the people free by the burning bush now Egypt is a strange place Egypt worshipped over 80 gods but only Rome and India could beat Egypt at that time on the, the multiplicity of gods they worship it has been well said that you cannot understand the Egyptian until you understand their gods the Egyptian worship lion, ox ram, wolf dog, trees frogs, locusts and all kinds of insects, cats vulture, hippopotamus crocodile, cobra dolphin many types of fishes they worship in that place Pharaoh himself was a god because the king was the chief priest of their evil faith and any time they were going to worship the idols, the king would lead the procession to the festival of gods. So, unto every pharaoh, there is a backing power. There are gods that was backing them. So when he said, let my people go and they did not listen, God converted Nile to blood. He brought him frogs. He brought him lice. brought him flies. He attacked their livestock. He put boils on their body. Then he moved to the heavenlies release hills upon them moving locusts then moving darkness after that darkness now pass through pass through all those plagues you see that troubled Egypt they were not just against Pharaoh and his people but against all the gods of Egypt it was a battle of the gods many of us are going through troubles now but what do you not realize the powers battling for your destiny they are not the powers you can see with your eyes it's a terrible battle going on behind the scene unto every pharaoh there is a backing power and the battle for our destiny 99% of the time is battle of gods battle of gods say Daniel beloved of the Lord since the day you started praying we have sent answer for 21 days there was a prince of Persia, a demonic power in the sky, strong enough to actually stop an angel of God from coming through. If Daniel had kept quiet, that angel would just have gone back. Some of us say, what to do sometimes? Some of us say, I'm discouraged, I'm depressed. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't know why life is like this. That time you are doing your crying party. I will take a sleeping tablet tonight. I will sleep. There will be no night Then, you do that one. The angel that has been getting close before goes back again. And then you start praying again to initiate another movement from heaven. Since how some of us are moving about in circle. I say, I have prayed. I use prayer. I use prayer passport. Yeah, you use prayer. You use prayer passport. And the prince of Persia in the sky has started to fall down before you. All of a sudden, they fired an arrow of discouragement inside your blouse, inside your skirt, inside your coat. And you stop. Angels go back. 
Beloved, there are powers that can challenge an angel, bringing blessings to you. Say, where are you going? Who do you want to give this one? Who? Say, so, so, and so. No? No? No. You don't you know that in their family, they are not supposed to have this? And they'll be arguing with the angel. The angel will be talking. They'll be arguing. Just like men of God sometimes argue with demons. Argue with demons. Say, get out of that place. Say, no way. I'm not going. But why don't you want to go? Sir, she has a covenant with us now. Can't let her go like that. It's not possible. They begin to argue, okay, you have a covenant, but it's a greater covenant by the blood of Jesus. Then they will count on you again, say, but say, were you there when they formed our own covenant? I'm praying for somebody. All the satanic controversy against your breakthrough shall be demolished tonight. You shall be demolished. 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 He shall be demolished in the name of Jesus. The Pharaoh of your father's house assigned to torment your destiny shall be buried alive in the name of Jesus. Let your amen be loud. When God began to turn Nile water to blood, it was a battle against the God of the Nile. The Nile was the heartbeat of Egypt. All the trade, all the commerce, everything depended upon the Nile. They go constantly to worship the Nile. Happy was the spirit of the Nile. Happy, that's the name. No was the God of life inside the Nile. So when God turned that water to blood, it was to insult that God of the Nile. Your God shall insult every native doctor assigned against you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your God shall insult your enemies. Let your amen be loud. That amen is not loud enough. Let your voice roar like thunder. That was why it turned the vanilla to blood. He said, let them go. He said, the woman, okay. The Lord introduced the frogs. Multiplicity of frogs. Now, frogs were regarded as special idols in Egypt. If a frog jumped into your sitting room, they will begin praise worship to thank God that an idol has entered. They worship them. Not only that one. They use the structure of the frogs in their amulets and in whatever they hang on their neck. So you can't kill the frogs because they are gods, they are idols. And they are so real, they are so scarce. Now for the frog to now be all over the place. It was a direct insult to the god of Eket used in amulets, used in charms, used in magic. God said, let them go. I said, no. Okay, lies. Let them be lies. And lies came. Lies was an embarrassment to a god they call Geb. Geb, the great god of all those insects and all those things, was an embarrassment. Let them go. He said, no, let them be flies. Flies was an insult to the god of flies. Because they worship flies as well. It's a slap on the face to the god they call Amnon Ra, which is their god there. Let them go. He said, no. And God began to introduce livestock diseases, which is an insult to all the gods of the cattle that they serve. One of them is called Apis. I'm telling you all this thing, so you know that the battle to break the power of Pharaoh is the battle of the gods. I don't know who is contesting for your destiny now. I don't know the powers contesting for them. But a man or a woman gets into a terrible situation, even in the camp of the enemy. They are fighting themselves to steal from you. They are battling for you. Everyone is not involved now. Just darkness, just battling for you. I'm praying for such people that they will be delivered today in Jesus. <laughs> Let them go. He said no. Then God introduced boil. Boils. The boil was to insult their God of healing. They have a God of healing called Serapis. They have a God of medicine too. The boil disgraced them. Because the boil was on the body of the man who we say he wants to even do the medicine. Let them go. Say so no. So this number seven. The Lord now took the battle away from the earth into the heavenlies. Moving down into the heavenlies. 
hail began to fall, which is a disgrace to the God they call not the sky goddess. Because they worship the heavenly suit. The sky goddess was helpless. Let them go. He said, no. The God began to move in the locust. Locust. Which is a disgrace. So they are God called Nepri. The God of grass, the God of grain. Let them go. They know. God now moving darkness. Which is an insult to the sun God that is out. A direct insult to that God. So look at the battles that was fought to release those men from that bondage. 430 years of bondage required the gods to be defeated before they could let them go. And as you go here, here in Nigeria, as you go from city to city, from town to town, from tribe to tribe, there are different gods assigned to battle for the members of the tribe. There are some parts in this country, the, the evil powers will come out, bite a person and hide inside the water. Those who are from there, they know themselves. There are some places in this country, the power will come out, bite a person, hide inside the rock. Those who come from there, they, they know what I'm talking about. There are some places in this country, they will bite the person, hide inside the desert. You know what I'm talking about. So on various locations, there are different, different assorted kinds of powers that are battling for the destiny of man. I will say, let this person go. I will not let them. What's your reason? This person. Let this person have a child. I will not. What's your reason? Let this person prosper. I will not. It's those powers we are here to deal with. So God had to move in and deal with the gods who are backing the bondage. So, during the battle of the gods, those gods were defeated one by one, one by one, one by one, one by one, until when the last one came down, and I said, now, nah, it is time for me to pass through. He struck at their firstborn. Those firstborn who were regarded as idols in the way they operate in that place. We need to understand the warfare that we are fighting. The fact that solutions of problems are not feasible at a particular time, does not mean that they are not being solved. Does not mean that they will never be resolved. If God opens your eyes and you see the battle of the gods, see the war going on, you'll be amazed. Then you will not keep quiet. Once you notice that the more you pray, the stronger the angels that are fighting for you become. The more you pray, the more heaven reinforces to fight for you. And the less you pray, the less heaven will come to your aid. It's like that song I was singing at the youth church that they used to teach us at our Sunday school in those days. It says, read your Bible, pray every day, you will grow, grow, grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, you will grow, grow, grow. You will grow, grow, grow. You will grow, grow. grow. Grow, read your Bible, pray every day, you will grow, grow, grow. And they now taught us the reverse. Don't read your Bible, forget to pray, you will shrink, shrink, shrink. When you become weak at the altar of prayer, you weaken the angels who are fighting the gods who are battling your life. Or you discourage the angels. Ah, look at you too. Look at the person we are fighting for. He's sleeping and he's salivating. Look at the person we are fighting for. The person we are fighting for. He's losing interest in the prayer. Rather, every night, film, film, watch film, watch wood nolly, nolly wood, wood nolly, nolly wood, until you fall asleep, sleep off. And the angels are well. It is Nollywood night, no prayer. So the time you will have run an extra mile, the enemy gathers extra mile instead. It is good for you to repent before the Lord. Some people, their prayer altar already is too weak to fight against the battle that is missing them. Fundamentally too weak. They have never put fire on that altar before. For such a person to now keep quiet, a problem happens. Uh, I'm praying now. If not for those prayers, those small, small prayers, things could have been worse, I tell you. Right now where you are, 
you may actually be at the edge of the most powerful breakthrough in your life. It's a tragedy to allow your Pharaoh to take over. Nobody is finished when the person is defeated. You are finished when you surrender. Failure is not falling down. Failure is staying down. So there is a certain Pharaoh these days facing children of God. There is Pharaoh of bodily problems. There is Pharaoh of physical problems. There is Pharaoh of mental problems. There is Pharaoh of spiritual problems. There is Pharaoh of marital problems. There is Pharaoh of financial problems. There is Pharaoh of career problems. There is Pharaoh of dream problems. There is Pharaoh of emotional problems. I spell of environmental problems. I spell of witchcraft trouble. There is inherited Pharaoh. There is hidden Pharaoh. There is transferred Pharaoh. There is envious Pharaoh. All battling against the children of God. We have a serious work to do today. We have a serious agenda to run. We have to break the power of any Pharaoh assigned against us. This Pharaoh... They are responsible for loss of rights and privileges. The new Pharaoh suddenly came and stopped everything the Israelites have been enjoying. He stagnated their economy and put their life in jeopardy. So Pharaoh will lead to loss of rights and privileges. Every power gunning against your rights and privileges shall be disgraced in the name of Jesus. So when you suddenly lose your job, suddenly lose your marriage, when your freedom is suddenly taken away from you, and the thing is not your fault, when your past good deed is not remembered, but just as men are repaying you with evil, the spirit of Pharaoh is at work. You are losing your rights, losing your privileges, just like that Pharaoh did to the children of Israel. Pharaoh is responsible for discrimination. This new Pharaoh began a clever, a subtle method of discrimination against the Israelites. The jobs that the Egyptians will not do were forced on the Israelites. So when hopes are dashed, opportunities are aborted, expectations crumble, the power of Pharaoh is at work. This is a serious matter. The spirit of Pharaoh is stubborn. It pursues from coast to coast. It pursues from city to city. We have work to do tonight. The first thing to do is to make sure that you are a friend of God. That's non negotiable because the word of the Lord says, Let my people go. That is the people of God, not the people of the devil. Let my people go. Become a friend of God. The next thing to do is to confess any sin that is in your life. Don't cover up anything. The third thing to do is to invite the Lord into the war front. Let him pass through the battle you are facing. Let there be a battle of the gods and let the gods that is not the king of kings and the lord of lords be destroyed. Unto every man a pharaoh is assigned. All eyes closed. In case you are not born again, if not just surrender your life to Jesus, just raise up your right hand where you are and see what I'm going to say after. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. As from now, I say bye-bye to the devil. I enter into the kingdom of light. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank you for your children who have joined this program. Meet each and everyone at the point of their needs. Do great, marvelous, wondrous, outstanding things in their lives in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 I thank God for those of you who surrender your life to Jesus Christ in this program. God bless you in Jesus' name. You've taken the most important decision in life, and I'll guess with you. For more information, counseling, and prayers, kindly send your name, your address, your telephone number to the WhatsApp number displayed on the screen. You can also send us an email. The email address is also displayed on the screen. And we shall be getting across to you shortly. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, those who are here tonight, and the enemy keeps claiming that their head is their territory. It's a lie. Right there in that place you call your territory, I set you a place. And I order you to depart. 
in the name of Jesus. And anyone tonight who has been escorted to this service by a strong man to steal whatever you get, right there where you are, the power of God is coming upon you. Now, with a voice that nobody's voice can overshadow, if you can still hear the voice of the person close to you, it means you have not started praying. This is a very serious matter. The battle of the God. They have been battling against you since you are in the womb. And enough is enough. You will now shout this loud and clear. Shout it with fire and with power. Gods of my fathers! Are! Your time is up! Incubate my head! 
that. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, pray. Now, this next prayer, I will not stop you until I see things happening. It's one of the strongest prayers we have to pray here today. Say, Power of Pharaoh! Over my affairs! Yeah! In the name of Jesus! Jesus. Aha. Papiatasa. Rima pandika. Baka tanda kayaba. Dare ali ko sotoko. Marido ka sentila ka. Baka tende kayabo shenta. Rima soponde kayabo shenta aba. Bapola boka pia. Bakola boka pia na kasanta. Rima sopinda kayabo shenta. Jesus' name we pray.